Michael, my dude, what is up? All right, so, knock my coffee out of my hand. All right, so this week, in my never-ending quest to get through all these movies that I buy, I managed to get through six of them. Some of them were pretty good. Some of them, not so good. All right, so, let's go over what I watched this week. These are the horrors that I've seen. How's work going? It's awesome. As always, I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe. All right, so the first thing that I watched this week, this I have not heard very many good things about at all, but I am one who really doesn't pay a whole hell of a lot of attention to that. Attention to that, I usually just go on my own opinion, and I actually really, really enjoyed M. Night Shyamalan's Old. I thought this was really cool. This is a story about a family goes on a resort vacation. After they get there, the manager or owner or whoever the hell that guy was comes up to them and asks them if they would like to go to a secluded beach that not very many, it's like a VIP thing. They go to this beach and suddenly everybody starts growing old. The kids are it's much more noticeable in the children because, you know, as you and I know, as humans, we reach, reach a certain age and we stop growing and our looks, instead of evolving and maturing, as we get older, they just start to basically deteriorate, unfortunately for us. I'm 51 and my back's kind of blown out right now. So that whole deteriorate shit, it's real. So they get to this secluded beach, everybody starts getting old, some people die, some people don't. It's a pretty cool movie. I, and I think it's a very, very cool idea. The family's not the only one there. There's a family and a couple, several other couples. Uh, there's another child there other than the child that's within these two, uh, within this, whatever. There's a bunch of other people there other than our main cast, our main characters, our main family, whatever, whatever what way, whatever coat of paint you want to put on that. I thought it was good. Very well made. Absolutely beautiful movie. Uh, obviously, the scenery is great. It's at like a tropical resort, so you can't beat that. I've been to one of them in my life, too. Pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know if I would enjoy that as much now that I've been sober for ten and a half years. But when I was there, it was a pretty fucking good time. So, old. M. Night Shyamalan. I like some of his stuff more than others. Some of his movies more than others, I should say. As do you, I'm sure. But if you haven't seen Old, give it a watch, check it out. I thought it was really, really good. The next thing I watched, I cannot say the same thing about, was The Reeds from the eight films to die for after Dark Horror Fest 4. This movie, a couple guys go to, I thought I was going to have a, a friggin' another movie with terrible teenagers in it. Not so much. This is a group of friends go and rent a boat. At least they thought they had a boat reserved. They did not. The boat that they reserved was broken down. They had to get another boat. So they get another boat. They go out on the water and they get stuck in the reeds. It appears to be something in the reeds. This is where those, those bastard kids come in. They One guy sees kids. Sometimes you see kids. Sometimes you don't see kids. But I'm not going to tell you whether they're actually there or not or what that's supposed to be. By saying that, I probably gave some of that away anyway the boat goes up is going through the water and it somehow gets stuck on some sort of a cage or anchor i'm not real sure exactly what this thing is but it's a big metal spike sticks up through the bottom of the boat one of the characters in the film falls down on top of this spike and it sticks right through his guts so somebody's got to go for help dude jumps off the boat goes out into the reeds finds like a dead burned up dog then finds a bunch of kids who may or may not be there burning up animals. Man, this movie was kind of all over the place for me. I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't know what I should be looking at. I found myself rewinding this, literally skipping chapters backwards, thinking I missed something and I didn't. I, it just, that movie was, I mean, it wasn't God awful terrible, but it was definitely, you had to focus. You know what I'm saying? Well, at least I had to focus to get through that. 
like I said, it was okay, but I was it was nothing. It certainly ain't nothing to write home for. I've seen a whole bunch of these After Dark Horror Fest, eight films to die for movies, and a whole lot of them are really, really good. The Reeds ain't one of them. It was okay at best. The next thing I watched was a Dollar Tree film that I found called The Unwilling. In that movie, real quick, and a very small part in this movie is, uh, shit, I forgot his name. Hold on, hold on. Lipper Meyer, how does it turn that? Lance Henriksen, thank you. Lance Pumpkinhead is uh, in this movie, but he's got a small role. He's the dad. The dad dies in this movie, and all of the children and people close to him are called together for the reading of the will. After they get to this guy's house, he's one of the sons or he is a son or the son. They get to his house. He's got crippling OCD. I have OCD, but it's just like the cleanliness part and the shit belongs where it needs to be part. It's not that everything's gotta be done three times and high, high, high and step, step, step and walking back and forth. That's the shit that this guy's got. Counting everything, it's retarded. I'm so glad I don't have, yeah, I said retarded. Lighten up, snowflakes. All right, so. In this movie, when he's getting, they're getting ready to have the will done, uh, there's a mysterious knock on the door and a mysterious box left at the door. The box does not open. It looks like it's made of burned up charcoal with an octopus on top of it. And this box seems to it, uh, give you what you want. So in this film, there's a guy who has, who, who's very greedy. And all of a sudden, he's gifted with a gold bar. When he picks it up, it burns him. And he is now seemingly possessed by the dead father, Lance Hendrickson's character. A little while later, there's a drug addict. At the beginning of the movie, is trying to score some drugs. But he's got to leave because they're going to be late for the will. Blah, blah, blah. He doesn't have a ride because he doesn't have a car because he's a freaking drug addict. That's the way that works most of the time, too. So he's being picked up to be brought to the, uh, to the reading of the will. He is gifted cocaine by this mysterious box, which, great, that's exactly what he needs. They're stuck in a house. You got one greedy guy who's got a gold bar who's being burned by the bar. You got another guy who's a drug addict. He's getting cocaine. It, it's that sort of shit going on in here. Eventually, they realize that not only are they stuck in this house, when they open the doors, it appears that they're actually stuck inside of this box. It, it, how did they get out? I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm talking about that. That movie was okay. Some of the effects in that movie were like, they looked like, it would look like it was made by very inventive kindergartners, which is good on the kindergartners because they got some CGI made into a movie. But for a movie in this day and age, the, 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 the CGI was laughable. Some of the practical effects in this movie were actually pretty cool. Box looked cool. Some of the, the, the scenes with blood in this movie look pretty cool. But there's like one particular thing where it looks like a shadow is coming across the ground. And it's 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 about as bad a CGI as you can get. It made Sharknado, Sharknado look like uh, an Emmy Award winning feature. Bring, I got Sharknado on my mind because of something else that's coming up that I'm looking at. So prepare for more Sharknado comparisons. But yeah, this movie was all right. I mean, it, it wasn't I, I, it wasn't terrible, but it was just okay. It wasn't great, it was okay. Tell you what, I honestly think that I liked it more than The Reeds. And The Reeds was definitely a better made film, but I thought The Unwilling was okay. Honestly, I'll be unwilling to watch that movie again, but it was all right. The next thing that I watched I actually watched three movies last night, and this is the first of those, those three. Alicia Silverstone and James Tupper in The Requin. Is that Requin? 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 I don't know. The Requin. Big ass shark. All right. That, the cover of that is incredibly deceiving because there, I don't see any shark in this movie. Look, there's Alicia Silverstone. There's big ass shark. In this movie, you don't get the impression that there's any sharks that are that big, that's a big ass shark. And you don't see any sharks until way, way, you're like hip deep in this movie before you even see sharks. At one point you think you see sharks, but they're very obviously dolphins. And then it's revealed that they actually are dolphins. 
So, in this movie, Alicia Silverstone previously had a miscarriage. Her husband knows that she's all whacked out in the brain now. She's all messed up emotionally. She, she's like on medication, she's like messed up. So he takes her on this beautiful tropical vacation. We're back again. So tropical, old and reckless. They go to this beautiful tropical resort. They rent out a little cabana that's way out at the end of a pier. A storm comes. They kind of think that maybe they want to move and not stay where they are because maybe it's unsafe. But then they go, ah, it'll be fine. That would have made for a really shitty movie. Instead, they were not fine. The storm comes along, knocks the little cabana off of its pillars, its support pillars, and they go floating off out into the ocean. They're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no land in sight in any direction, and they are just floating away. One of the dumbest things that I've ever seen take place in a movie in my life takes place in this movie. They're out on a raft, they're in the middle of nowhere, and they use a plastic water bottle to start a fire on this raft. Again, they're in the middle of nowhere with no land in sight, and they decided to start a fire on the raft. That doesn't go well, as you might imagine, and I'm gonna leave this there. So that's the kind of movie we're dealing with. We're starting water, we're starting fires with plastic bottles full of water and sunlight on the only means of life support you have while floating in the middle of the ocean. Good stuff. Now this movie, as far as the CGI goes in this, this is where Sharknado immediately came to mind. The, the scenes in this movie where the storm is knocking that cabana off of its posts or pillars or supports, whatever, is real herky-jerky. The storm looks really fake. The water looks really fake. And the cabana itself looked like it was made on a computer. It immediately reminded me of Shark, the Sharknado films, which, by the way, I find to be very, very fun. But who are we kidding here? Sharknado knows that... that franchise knows it's ridiculous and they do what they can to make each installment more and more ridiculous if you haven't watched those movies watch those movies you'll see what i mean they're very fun but we're not talking about that we're talking about this the cgi in that movie was very reminiscent of sharknado enough so that at certain points with the cgi you go i wonder if the people from sharknado made that and just decide to make a more serious film than another Sharknado sequel, uh, sequel. That's another one that was just okay. I don't see any reason why I should run back and watch that anytime soon. Maybe when I'm on like a, a shark movie kick, which kind of occasionally happens. But when that happens, I just watch Jaws. I watched the Jaws 1 and Jaws 2, the two really good shark movies. Uh, there's some other good shark movies out there, but the Wreck one, quite honestly, isn't one of them. The next movie that I watched... I have it on this here. It's the Shadows Collection, which is eight movies. I got this at Dollar Tree, which my math tells me that the, watching this movie cost me a, roughly a little more than 12 cents to watch this movie. This movie was Feeding Grounds, right there. Feeding Grounds, which is the second movie listed on this collection. Wow. Uh, this is deceiving too, because speaking of water, Lighthouse, ship, storm, nice. This takes place in a desert. All right, so this movie begins with two lesbians driving through the desert, and you know they're lesbians because they flash down to a book sitting on the back seat that says lesbian sex or sex between les... Something along those lines as if they couldn't just show you they were lesbians by showing them hold hands or something like that. Then they decide that they want to pull over and fool around and get engaged. And do you want to do it in the car? No, we may get caught. So let's do that on the ground out in the desert. We're going to do that. Not that's a, that, 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 was, that was about the best part of this movie, to be honest with you. All right. So you see the two lesbians out there, and then you don't because they get killed. And then you see a pack of friends come out there. I don't know. Seemingly, there's two cars full of friends. Seemingly, there's 56 of them in these two cars. They go out in the desert, and nothing happens for an hour and 20 minutes. They're just walking around out in the desert. 
you keep thinking that they give you the, the filmmakers give you the impression that there's something in the desert. They're, they look like they're turning into zombies, but they're not. They look like they're being eaten to death basically by the sun, but they're really not. And they all slowly one by one start just throwing up green shit. I'll tell you what, I will never knock. This movie was definitely an independent thing made by some guy on like his iPhone or something. I, I don't like to knock filmmakers. I don't, because I don't have a horror film. I don't have a movie that you can buy in a really cool The Shadows collection at Dollar Tree for a buck or buck 25 if you find it today. I don't have any of that. I don't even have a really good movie idea, but neither did they. So I'm not gonna knock these people because they did something I haven't done and they had the gumption to do it and go out there and make a damn movie. That's awesome. I'll never knock that. But that doesn't mean that I have to like it. And that movie was awful. It was bad. It was bad to the point where I don't think I was five minutes into this and I very seriously considered taking that out and not watching it. Like, literally. But the only reason I did not do that is because I bought this damn thing. That was my freaking 12 cents that I spent for that. I told myself I was gonna watch these movies, and this is part of it. So, I bit the bullet, I followed through, and I watched the movie, and it never got good. Like I said, the opening scene where you see lesbians is just, and, and you don't even see the lesbians. That was the best part of this movie. The best part of this was done within five minutes and it went rapidly downhill from there. If you find this in Dollar Tree for a buck, well now, buck 25, I'm real, that pisses me off. Buck 25 tree, if you find this and you make the choice to buy it, take my advice and don't watch Feeding Ground. It sucks. Next up, I thought I watched half of this last night, and I watched half of this this morning. After watching that bullshit, I decided to watch this movie. The Human Centipede, there's the glare, happy glare, I gotta name that thing. The Human Centipede 2, full sequence. Now, I watched The Human Centipede a couple weeks ago, it may have even been the first one of these, the horrors I've seen uh, videos that I made, and I decided, Rather than jump around and wait to come across Human Centipede 3 and then maybe Human Centipede 2 sometime in the next four years that I'm doing this shit, I decided that I'm going to watch Human Centipede 2. I needed a little redemption after watching The Feeding Grounds and watch a movie that actually was pretty good. I am a very big fan of The Human Centipede and I'm also a very big fan of The Human Centipede 2. They're very different movies. The Human Centipede, we all know it. If you're watching horror movies and you're watching this, more than likely you know exactly what it is. Crazy doctor finds three people, takes them captive, ass to mouth, three people, first sequence, little teeny centipede. This one is a guy who works in a parking garage who is disturbed. He was sexually abused as a child. His mother fucking hates him. He hates her as much or more. He works in this parking garage. He's a huge fan of the film, The Human Centipede. And when I say he's a fan, that's putting it mildly. He follows through with what the doctor did in The Human Centipede, but he does it fourfold. Instead of capturing three people and connecting them as the mouth, he does it with 12. Getting a text message from my wife that she wants to go to Vineland. I'll do that today. He connects 12 people as the mouth, and he's not a doctor. So in the first, and the atmosphere is complete. This movie is completely different. The first movie, it's a doctor. He knows what he's doing. It's medically accurate, or that's what they say when they're making this film. And when you watch the film, it's in a very sanitary setting. The environment's very clean. It's exactly what you would hope for if you were getting your mouth sewed to an asshole. It's, 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 it couldn't be better, right? Great. Other than the fact that this guy's doing this and he's crazy. Perfect setting, clean, sanitary, everything's sanitized. Great. This guy's doing it in a parking garage. He doesn't talk. He's a main character. His name's Martin. 
And through this entire movie, he says nothing. He doesn't speak. But he does manage to ca capture 11 citizens and one actress. And who was that actress? That actress is one of the girls who portrayed one of the three sequence, one of the three pieces in Human Centipede, the first sequence. He lies to her agent, gets her to fly out there. She thinks she's going out to do a, a, an audition for a Quentin Tarantino movie. And he bangs her in the head with a crowbar, pulls out her tongue, sews some dude's mouth to her ass, and there we have it. She is the head of the centipede. He don't know what he's doing. He's doing this with like serrated knives from his mom's kitchen and pliers pulling tongues and teeth out. It, it's pretty grisly. This is also, let me make this clear, is in black and white. So you, you see a lot of blood, but the blood is black. It's not blood red because it's in black and white. And I sometimes wonder if they did that so that it could get some sort of a, I don't know, is this not rated? It's gotta be not rated, right? I don't know, we're not here for that. Not rated. So I have to assume that he did not make the blood red because maybe that would, I would assume that if this movie was in full color, that it would be even more disturbing than it is in black and white. And in black and white, it gives it, I don't wanna say less disturbing because it's, it's messed up. But it, 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 it's, it's more grimy. It looks more filthy than it does brutally violent and bloody. Of course, that makes sense, makes sense to me. Hope that makes sense to you. I really like The Human Centipede, too. I don't, I don't know if I want to say that I like it more than the first one because they're very different. It's, those two movies are so different that it's almost impossible to compare them to each other. Uh, so, yeah, this one seems a lot more based in reality of a psychopath that it is a doctor that's a psychopath. I don't know. Maybe, I'm now on that point, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. This one seems like it's absolutely something that a psychopath would do where, you know what, you if you're gonna do this at all, you gotta be pretty messed up. So yeah, that doctor in the first one, he was a psychopath too. So delete everything I just said, whatever. Mm. So, in rating these movies, I would say that the best movie that I watched these this week was between Old and The Human Centipede 2. I've seen this before. So this week, I think I'm going to lean towards the, the better made movie with the really cool storyline and go with Old. I like that a lot of people that I've seen online were very underwhelmed by that movie and let down. <clears throat> now, you know, we all have opinions. My opinion differs. I thought that was fantastic. And the least favorite film of the week, I want you to take a wild guess at what that might be. We're gonna go with The Feeding Grounds off of this eight film co shadows collection thing. That thing was dog shit. Don't watch it ever in your life. That movie was so bad that if you own this thing, I, I figure, uh, try and figure out a way to scratch that off the disc. It may improve the value of the other seven movies that are in there. All right, I'm getting out of here. Let me know what you guys think about these movies. Have you seen them? Have you not seen them? How many have you seen? Which of these was your favorite if you've seen them all? Which I bet you any amount of money, you some bitches ain't seen the feeding grounds. That thing was a fucking mess. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up if you really like this video and you've been enjoying my content up to this point. Please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that bell. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day. And thank you for watching, folks. See you in the next one. Later, brother.